Sami, welcome to Good Afternoon Ghana. Welcome Thank to Metro you. TV. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Francesca. Yes. It's How are you? It's been it's well, been long. Right? It's been it's been years. <laughs> and um, uh, I mean, it's it's good news that um, it's good to see a sister again doing very well, uh, even though she doesn't look for her brother. But it's fine. She she yeah, she apologizes. She has changed, okay. and she's going to do better. Um, but good like, to have like you, and thanks for Barack coming. Barack Obama said that let prosperity trickle down. So. Definitely. Yes. So once <laughs> you're doing well. But I'm excited to see you and excited to be in the studios of Metro. Our new, our new studios. It's what do you beautiful. think? It's beautiful. Thank uh, you. Uh, for a moment, I thought it was Cable News Network. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that's a nice compliment. Yes, Thank it's, you. It's beautiful. I haven't, I haven't been to Metro TV in years. Okay. But I'm excited to return to Metro TV. Great. Mm. Great. Now, I'll, I'll take off um, from, before we get into the names that are coming up and the considerations uh, for the MPP's <laughs> pick come oh. 2024, the question really is that it's just, what, about three months into President Kufuadu's second term, the first year of his second term. Why are we observing this kind of jostling, if I should use that word? So, first of all, let me say good afternoon to Ghana. Good afternoon to your cherished uh, viewers. But for us as a party, we want to register our, our greatest displeasure on the deliberate attempt by uh, posters, media houses to shift the focus of our government into more of uh, an arena where we are discussing possible successes to President Ekufuado. I mean, clearly, uh, we don't find that uh, palatable at all. We're less than four months into our administration. Government is still being formed. The president is even yet to release names of deputy ministerial uh, nominees. Then you go to that of MMDCs. You have that of heads of agencies and institutions. And for us to be having a discussion which the MPP will take a decision uh, in late 2023 or early 2024, we feel that, I mean, it's, it's a tactical approach by maybe the media or, to a larger extent, um, other people to, to have us look a different direction. You don't think it's we, reasonable we, given the context, but um, that's mm -hmm. some, for instance, it's posters, not reasonable. posters came out of Dr. Baumia. He um, has denied. Of I've course. also seen um, the... A Greek minister, yeah, Greek minister also minister. denying yes. uh, an earlier publication that he was campaigning. And so and this so, necessarily didn't come from the media. The, the posters were out there. The, the yeah. trips were there. And the media is that's just what I'm following saying. That's it. what I'm saying. The media and others. And I think I was very categorical. Who are these wrong, others? But, well, that's, that's what we're trying to unravel. And the party has set up a team to also monitor these activities in the constituencies and in the regions. Over the last 10 days, the national officers of the MPP We've embarked on a nationwide tour where we've visited the uh, constituencies and zones within the Greater Accra. We've been to the Ashanti region. We've been to the Bono region. We've been to the Ahafo region. And we've been to the Bono East. We're engaging party executives at the constituency, at our polling station, at the regional level, other stakeholders, youth groups. First of all, to thank them. Uh, on, on their splendid performance in 2020 and also preparing the party machinery for the NPP's agenda to break the aid. That is what we want to talk about. Oh, we will talk about aid. that. No, like the NPP's agenda to break the aid. But that, A very ambitious that, agenda. I know, but it's possible. The NPP always defied the odds because in 2020, people normally say that looking at the polls in Greater Accra, it gives you an inkling as to whether you win the presidency or not. We won the presidency, even though we lost some few votes in Greater Accra. People also do indicate that if you do not win majority seats in the central region, you lose the general elections. Mm -hmm. we, we are not the majority seat holders in the central region now in terms of parliamentary, but we won the general election. People also did uh, allude to the fact that, oh, what happens in the American elections by convention, there's a trickle-down effect in Ghana. For the first time, you have a democratic elected president in the United States. And then you have an NPP president still in Ghana. So we have demonstrated with these elections that this is a party capable of breaking the barriers and also moving beyond the expectations of people. But what 
we want to also anchor our 2024 agenda and, um, and victory on will be the performance of, our, of the NPP administration again between 2021 and 2024. Whoever succeeds President Ekufuado will be campaigning on the record of Ekufuado's achievement and the MPP's performance okay. from 2021 to 2024. Okay. Let me take so you... So you cannot break the eight if we haven't delivered on our mandate. Let me take you... So that's a conversation. That's the, yeah. the chunk of today's conversation. That's but I want to take it back and look at the MPP's performance in the 2020 election. That's fine. Your uh, MPP suffered a lot of casualty in, mm. in Parliament. Yes. You, you moved from being the... Super majority. Super majority in 2016... Mm to 2020 where you had a hung parliament and an independent candidate whom your party sacked um, came to save the day. That's aside. You lost about 33 seats. Mm. How, how does the party rate its performance? Well, we lost That's a 30, big blow. We lost 33 but also smart 17 as well from the NDC. I mean, clearly we did go into the elections knowing very well that um, as a party and as a government from 2017 to 2020, we have definitely taken some tough decisions. And for every policy of government, um, there are bound to be people who also suffer at the end of it. But then, traditionally, it's difficult to change. But when progress demands change, there will have to be change. i give you an example. Upon assumption in office of President Ekufuado, he realized that our water bodies were being polluted through unregulated small-scale mining activities that we normally call galamsey. Mm -hmm. The government, through an ambitious program, decided that let's tackle this galamsey menace. This was definitely going to affect some people, and it was definitely going to also give us some short in terms of vote. But you need to choose Ghana over your, 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 your individual or political dream or vote. Secondly, realize that our banking sector was in turmoil. We needed to take the painful and tough decisions. It's not everybody who will understand you within that period. But someday, posterity will be kind to the MPP and President Ekufuado's administration. So obviously, you have people who will go like, well, I thought that my money has been locked up here. Even though it's been paid, it was paid without interest and all that. So they were definitely out of pain, decide not to even vote or vote against you. But in the long-term effect, we are strengthening our financial sector and it's going to yield the needed dividends, maybe post Ekufuado's administration. So you're making now, reference to some of the unpopular well, decisions? Some of, no, not unpopular. Some decisions that were tough. The medicine was bitter, but it was necessary. But it was necessary. It was necessary. I, I, I want you and to... And then i give you a typical... The last one before you come in, Francisco. Okay. Sorry. Um, if you take the coastal belt, we instituted this closed season where for, for, for a period you have, we allowed, we disallowed fishermen from going to the sea uh, so that the fingerlings could grow and also help aquaculture. You have tough somebody... Decisions. Yeah, tough decisions. But you have somebody whose uh, daily meal depends on the three, four, five catch of fishes that will patrol the streets of Oxford Street or Osu when it's bought, that's the person's chop money for the day. But the person is thinking about his personal interest. We are looking at how we can improve upon our fish stock nationwide. So such decisions definitely were also going to affect some people down the ladder. And these are people who definitely also go like, oh, even though it's a good policy of government, I feel that uh, my interest was not properly considered, so I decide to vote against the government or I decide to stay away from it. So, I mean, what In is the interesting, midst of all this... What is interesting is, and still about what you're saying, yes. is that for some constituencies, for yes. besides Adenta, etc., yes. the president still won in those seats. Yes. So was it really about the president or the candidates? No, but but I, I also think, in all fairness, that's what I'm saying, I'm giving you some tough decisions that were taken. Then you also come to constituencies that the president won, we lost parliamentary, or we won parliamentary, we lost the presidential. Let's take Adenta. Uh, I live in Adenta, Adenta constituency. Adenta has... As do I. Oh, yes. Um, I, 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 okay, I think I've spotted you a couple of times. <laughs> but they have a very interesting history. Mm -hmm. 2004, that constituency was created under the Kufu administration. Yes. The first member of parliament they elected was the late Honorable Parehamon, yes. who was an MPP candidate, an yes. MP. 
Then in 2008, they removed the NPP MP and brought in Edouard Sarr, the NDC's candidate, who yeah. became MP. 2012, Adentan constituents removed Edouard Sarr and brought Ashimo for the NDC side again. Yes. In 2016, they removed the NDC and brought here Abu Abiy and Samoa yes. from the MPP side. And then in 2020, they decided to also reverse to Ramadan of the NDC side. So if you check the history of Adenta, and now it's become heavily cosmopolitan, a lot of middle class, yeah. and you can attest to the fact that if you take, take the lakeside area, take the Nana Chrome side, the housing down, the Sned flat, the margin, these are areas where you have lots of middle class and upper class people moving towards. So if they feel that the president has performed, but we are not seeing much from our MP. They will vote against you. So these are not people that you can say these are stuck voters. I will call them more of swing voters in that constituency. I take you to Evaluwe Ajomorojura, where my good friend, sister Catherine Abelima Afeku lost her seat. Mm -hmm. Catherine had been MP before. Then they removed her, brought an NDC candidate. Then Catherine came back to win for the MPP. And they've now also removed the MPP, brought in NDC. For if you check um, a value Jomorojira, they never keep an MP for more than a term. I take you to Jomoro constituency, still in the Western region. Mm -hmm. The president won the presidential vote. In fact, we won it for the first time in 2016. That's the first time we won Jomoro. And then in 2020, they decided to vote against our candidate. Uh, for MP who was a sitting MP, but decided to vote presidential for President Ekufuado. So you have to analyze the various dynamics, and that is why as a party we have commissioned a team, uh, the Osafo Marvel led uh, committee, to also go around, engage the regions, the constituencies. Aside that, um, I wouldn't name the group, but the party has also contracted an external body that's outside the party's bracket to also drill down to these constituencies nationwide so that we can also double check whatever report that we receive from many of these parties. This will serve as a guiding principle and will also serve uh, as useful tools and lessons as the NPP embarks on another journey uh, to break the aid in 2024. Very well. Now, I want us to talk about the names that are popping up. Where? Names where? Names that are popping up. To do what, Francisca? For <laughs> names that are popping up. There's no vacancy. There's no vacancy. The party hasn't declared any vacancy when it comes to the presidential But we saw all of these flyers. Is the party saying they have, they've well, got nothing to do with any of it? The, the various names that you are going to mention, and I, um, um, and I don't want to be oblivious of the fact that that was what you showed on your screen. The, on your screen, yes. The, to, to Metro TV and the media houses, these are the possible candidates. Yes. Right. We've engaged these candidates, and they all deny the fact that they haven't put any posters up or they are not asking their assigns and agent. Well, these are politicians, no problem. But for us, it's as good a party, that you said it, not me. That's what I'm saying. These are politicians. So it's, um, it's not that I'm doubting them, but there's a limit to what they can tell you. However, we also have their tacit endorsement and mm -hmm. commitment that they will not do anything to derail the forward march, the progress of our government, and our agenda to deliver on the four years that the Ghanaian people have given us. Look, every election is different. And that is why every election, we start the counting from one. There's no election that is a top-up. Even when it's a runoff, you still start from one. Hope you know that. Yes. Okay. So it is important that even though if you check the 2012 results, in 2016, the NPP superperformed in terms of the, the results. You are just opposing the 2016 results with 2020, and that is why you believe that we suffered some casualties and we lost some grounds. So it is clear that 2024 is still another open contest for the NPP once again to go to the Ghanaian people and present our record of achievement and where we, we believe that uh, we've done well for the Ghanaian people once again to renew our mandate or to tell us that, look, guys, uh, we're not impressed with what you did. I would be interested so, in what it is, the specifics of what you've done well. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's start with a bit of, a bit of education. That's right. Take us through uh, 
what the process will be from now till 2024 where so, a candidate will be, would have been selected. Just give us this, the process. Uh, I mean, it's a straightforward matter. When we are in government, we elect a candidate not later than 11 months to the polls. So that technically takes you to the end of 2023 or January 2024. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But before then, it's a political cycle. It's an electoral cycle. The MPP will have to begin the election of polling station executives, whose mandate expires in January 2022. So when we elect new executives at the polling station level in February, the MPP must elect electoral area coordinators. That's the next layer from the base. We are building the electoral college from the base. Okay. Then when that is done in, you know, at the end of February, in March, you are heading towards the election of constituency executives. When that is done, in April, you're heading towards the election of regional executives. Then the regional executives also prepares the regions the constituencies, the electoral area coordinators, the polling stations, then gets the party in the mood ready to elect national officers. National officers, our tenure expires in July. So it is likely, highly probable, that latest by July 2022, the MPP would have gone to the polls to elect national officers. Whether they will maintain the Freddie Blay-led administration of which I'm part, or they decide that they will elect new people to man the affairs of the party. Now, you've elected from the base all your executives to the national. These national officers must now then propose guidelines, submit to national council for it to be adopted, brief national delegate conference for them to have approval as well, to prepare the party, and for them to adopt the modalities to elect parliamentary candidates and presidential candidate. So whereas you are, when, you are in, when you have an orphan constituency, you definitely have to elect them more than a year to the general elections. I'm talking about parliamentary constituencies that we lost, like for instance, in Adenta. We won't elect our candidate in 2024. It's very possible that it will be done in 2023. And likewise, other constituencies that we lost, so that mm -hmm. it offers the, the candidates an opportunity to once again go to the grounds, to campaign, mend issues here and there. And then when we are done with that, we are preparing the party to elect the presidential candidate. The presidential candidate is, is, is selected by a very huge electoral college. We call it the National Delegate Congress, not conference. It's Congress that elects a presidential candidate. But the highest decision-making body is conference. But in terms of elections, mm -hmm. to elect a presidential candidate, you are talking about the National Delegate Congress. And you are talking about almost 200,000 delegates. 200,000 delegates. And this include all the people who have been elected from the polling station, the 5-5. Five five. So five polling stations times the 38,000 plus polling stations that we have across the country. Then you have the electoral area coordinators, almost uh, 9,000. Then you have the 275 constituencies times 17 of the executives. Then you have the 16 regions times 17 of the executives. Then you have the national officers and their deputies. Then you have our members of parliament forming part of the electoral college, our ministers of state, MMDCs, uh, patrons of the party, foundation members. So in excess of even 200,000, if you don't take care. So that is the kind of situation the, the that we find. 200,000 that constitutes this electoral college, mm. is it broad enough? There, there's feedback that it should be this is the biggest. widened. This is the biggest. Can it go any, so, any well, further than this? Uh, I don't have the powers to say it should go further or, or it should decline. But this is, this, this is, is what we have. And if anybody thinks that there should be a sponsored amendment to the current composition of our electoral college, when the party opens up, of course, every year we have national delegate conference, and likely this year we'll have constitutional amendments and reforms as well. If, the, if someone proposes from a strong school of thought and is deliberated upon at national delegate conference, and conference decides to adopt it, 
then is adopted. Recently, but Captain Ingravia and Father Payne made of, the call. In the absence of anything good, the West is accepted to be the best. Very well. But recently, Captain Nkrabia Fadati from the NPP yes. made the call that, yeah. that there's the need to expand the Electoral College. He, he cites example of the influence of money or vote buying. Um, in the, the MPP's primaries before the 2020 election, it was uh, to some extent, uh, for want of a better word, controversial. You lost about 40 certain MPs. There were allegations of uh, the influence of money, can that can his suggestion be a solution? Well, that it must be, be tested. Whatever he's saying must be tested and must be scientifically proven that these were indeed the cause. Uh, because you need to cite specific instances and references of places where um, there was money inducement, so a wrong candidate was chosen, and this wrong candidate eventually lost the general election. So it cannot be. Um, uh, address fatal, cite instances, and if the proposed amendment is what we call, will cure that mischief, then we get to that point. But as I sit here, I am emboldened by the fact that the current constitutional arrangement of the NPP tells us that this should be around the figure and this should be the, the delegate count towards the election of a candidate in future and that of uh, a parliamentary candidate, which is uh, minus the regional executive and the national. Because if you take the parliamentary, it's the polling station executives, electoral coordinators, constituency executives, patrons from the constituency, uh, council of elders, reps, and uh, that of foundation members. What will be the considerations that the party will consider in looking at a candidate? Um, the, the, the rules, the, the, the guidelines, the rules and regulations will definitely come up. But uh, it won't, it, we won't depart from what has been the norm in the past. You should be a member of the party. You should be of good standing. You should be of good character. You should satisfy the national constitution. Uh, you shouldn't have been convicted and all those things. So we will give true expression to the provisions in our 1992 constitution. And then you should also be a party person. You should okay. be a known party member. We cannot uh, bring an independent candidate to, to stand on the ticket of the MPP. So you must satisfy the, the party's lay down rules and regulations governing the conduct of the election. And then again, you must satisfy the national constitution. Will ethnic lines be a factor? This has come up several before elections or before uh, candidates are selected, will the ethnic line come up? And I ask this question because of the so-called uh, Ashanti Achim tag mm -hmm. around the NPP. And also we've, we've heard of uh, Dr. Baumia's name, even though he's denied and dissociated himself mm -hmm. of that, um, from that. Will that be a consideration, given that this, this party um, talks about being a Dankwa Buzia Dombo, given a certain inclusive you know, image? Um, I'm not too sure if I understand your question well. Because when you ask me if uh, will, will ethnic consideration come to play, <laughs> this is a national party. And whether you are a Sisala, whether you are an Ashanti, whether you are, you are a Krobo, a Chem, or a Gan, or an Eve, or a Seshi, you are free to apply when the time comes. And no impediment will be put in the way of any candidate. However, once you pick our nomination forms, when that time comes, which is not now, and that is why we are worried that people are stampeding us to even have this discussion and stampeding the party to go into another election mode. When that time comes and we set out the rules and regulations, I don't think that somebody will be prevented because he is a crowbar or somebody will be prevented because she is a fanti. And you, it won't come to play. You talk about the timing, but... If, if people are already, if, if the jostling is already out there. Mm. Okay, because which, people have made it an industry. 
an industry because even the, the, the media houses are also deliberately making it an industry, making it very topical. So that exciting passion. And then even feeding <laughs> some of these aspirants. Some I of mean, them. You didn't let me, didn't let some, me ask my question. Some of them have not even expressed that interest openly. But the media, they will be very friendly to put the person on the billboard and on the screen. So but maybe given the that it's out not, there, is it not pragmatic then to start even maybe just conversations? Which is well, what we're but doing. Starting the conversation now means that you are stampeding as to also truncate But that gives success. you an opportunity to yeah. own and lead your agenda 24. No, not at all. Because then you are asking us to be an elected candidate when we are not even six months in office. Because I've heard people now talking about, oh, an early election, early Congress. And I was like, I are we for real? Because in our party's constitution, it is clear and not, not, not ambiguous. Okay. Um, is it, is it, let's, let's look at some of the names that have come up, even though... I will, I will not be able to discuss names, Francesca, because... The time is not even right. And I don't... So, okay, so discussing these names, I don't have the approval whether they are interested in becoming flag bearer or not. But in discussing have their chances... Have you discussed it with them? No. We you ha haven't no. engaged any of them? No. So you don't we are have, yet to do you that. You don't have the approval to be showcasing their faces that they are interested? No, we, we have uh, the approval to, show, to showcase what has been put out as well as their denials and dissociations. And that's okay. what we've done. But I didn't see your denials. On this no, in, ma in many of our news reports, we, we've but done you're that. Saying who is next? But then, so you, on your own, you have shortlisted candidates for the MPP. No, Sabi, if you follow the report, there was there was nothing categorical. But I just want to ask. So then, what what, what did go into the into your selection of these few gentlemen? Let, let me ask the questions. I haven't seen a lady even on board. Let me ask the questions. But that will be interesting. We can put do you, you up do if you <laughs> Is, is there a lady in the mix there somewhere? Well, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Then, then that means feminism. You are not being fair today. <laughs> ben Epson narrows it to Alain Tremanting and Baumia. What are your thoughts on that? I'm unable to discuss it because, I, first of all, I'm not too sure whether Alan will contest and I'm not too sure whether Baumia will contest. And that is why I'm saying that um, discussing these names is an invitation uh, for me to express an opinion on something that I'm not even sure whether these gentlemen, even when we attend programs and we nominate someone to be chairman for an occasion, you, you give the person an opportunity to accept or reject that offer. And Francesca, that's what I'm saying, that maybe it was on a lighter note, but I haven't seen any of the media houses projecting any woman. It could be. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you there before you start mentioning my name again. Mm. Sami, I want us to no, talk about... You can do that. <laughs> Sami, I want us to talk about... The, no, is it that the you eight don't year don't think cycle you can and how. Francesca, you don't think. I mean, you are ambushing my interview. Well, because you're ambushing me with, with, with names of personalities no, that you have my, shortlisted for me. My job is to me. ask the questions. It's your prerogative and to ask And it's my job to not. also nominate you. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, okay, let's do this. Mm. Um, I want us to talk I'll about. I'll talk to Dr. Japon to start <laughs> raising funds for Francesca. I, I want us to talk about Agenda 2024, mm. which well, is to break right. this Very eight well. year cycle. Very well. But let me get some messages before we tackle this ambition plan of the NPP. Um, I have this message. It says, good afternoon. Please, watching you live from Evalue Ajomorodura constituency, and I'm the youth con constituency organizer, Samuel Jumo. Greetings to my humble national organizer, Sami Ewuku. Please, we are working hard to bring back Catherine Afeku. Um, to break the myth surrounding the eight-year rule, the MPP must go for the one who can supplement President Nanado's magical performance and also have the capacity uh, to unite the party. Let's go for gold. This is uh, coming from Kabiesi in Second D, and he says, Greetings to you, Sami Ewuku. Tell my brother, Sami Ewuku of the MPP, that the MPP must be very careful about what they are doing in less than four months in the second term. They will pay for it, and Ghanaians will not forgive them. That's Ben in Accra. Please, can the national organizer let us know if the party is considering expanding the Electoral College for parliamentary primaries? That's from Kofi P. In, at Impoko, and I think you've spoken to that, so that anybody uh, who has... Uh, who wants that to be considered can can do so, can go to the party with that. Good afternoon to our dynamic and charismatic couple, Sami Ewuku. You have indeed paid your dues and we hope you will uh, continue. Okay. 
Good afternoon. I'm enjoying the discussion. Please, could you give me Honorable Iwuku's number? Uh, that's Amate from Tema. Um, I'm sure you can send him a Facebook message if you want to speak to him. A very good afternoon to our vibrant General Secretary. I admire the way I'm he approaches organizer. the questions. Yes, he's not, uh, not General He's not General Secretary. He's yes. a national organizer. But that's from Sumani Mubarak in the okay. Gushegu constituency. Good Salam afternoon. Alaikum, Sumani. Yes, good afternoon. I think Mr. Wuku is being economical with the truth. The president performed as well as the MPs, just that they were smarter than the NDC. That's Z- Zabriski in Tamale. Okay. So um, that's the beauty of democracy. And uh, Zabriski has, has, has expressed his opinion. I disagree. I think that um, in contemporary times, and over the last four or five elections, no presidential candidate, no president in going to his second term has won with that or with in excess of 500,000 votes, half a million. So this cannot be that the president performed abysmally. I okay. disagree. Okay. Let's, let's talk about this agenda uh, for 2024 where mm. you want to do something that will be historical if, mm. if it happens, to break the eight-year cycle. That's the two-term since the, 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 sec- uh, the, the um, 92, that's the mm. Fourth Republic. Why, why, why such an ambition? And someone will say, is that realistic, given Ghana's history? Uh, well, first of all, um, in the MPP, we have a character, and in our genes, we defy the odds. When people even think um, it's impossible, we believe that it is possible. And there's no substitute for hard work. We believe that in winning 2024, we will not come on a silver platter. We must work for every vote. We must convince the Ghanaian people again that Nanado has performed. The MPP has performed over the last eight years. We go back to them in humility, out of respect, and once again engage them in a discourse and in in a debate of achievement and the track record of our success stories and ask them, to also renew our mandate for another four years. That's post-2024. So it's not something that is in a bag. Okay. 2024 is not in a bag. And 2024 success will depend on how the MPP conducts itself between 2021 and 2024. It will be important how the MPP also manages our internal party machinery, internal engagement, internal contest. Uh, That will also come to play. It's also important that we also ensure and promote party discipline Mm -hmm. because what reflects on the outside is what the people are going to also look upon it and judge you. Okay. In politics, perception is key. And that is why the president keeps warning the MPP folks that let's let's knit together, let's work together, and let's keep the enterprise Ghana together with our party afloat. You've raised two things. Okay, so. You've raised two, three things, but I want to focus on two. The mm. track record mm. and also the internal contest. Yes. The, the, the track record is, you, you earlier alluded to the President Kufado's track record. Yes. Um, but that notwithstanding, yes. it's not been easy. It hasn't You've had been the easy. PDS scandal, things that would easy. taint his tra- track record. So, for instance, the PDS scandal, Martin Amidou's resignation. Currently, there seem to be frequent power outages. People are livid about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are complaining about the new we elect, taxes. We elect, we elect leaders to fix challenges. Leaders are not elected to take ice cream at the offices. But people don't so feel... let me go to the PDS. Okay. The PDS, when the president... But let me just there, con- conclude the question. No problem. So Sorry. I just want to give you um, the other side. Yes, you may talk about your track record being good, but there's also the flip side that some people will be looking at, some Ghanaians mm-hmm. will be looking at to make that decision. How because does all these that things rub came off to your... play and they weighed all these issues to vote in 2020. Yeah. Is that correct? Definitely. Okay. So meaning that in 2024, they are going to judge us on what we did from 2021 to 2024. And so for me, um, on the issue of uh, Mr. Martin Amido, I think we, we've spoken about it extensively as a party and as a government. The executive secretary to the president has also responded. Yes. 
um, to the, the position of the government, that of the president, and that of the administration. And I wouldn't like to belabor the point because I How think How about that, the current situation um, with the power, with the so electricity, the to. new taxes that, that are being that's what I want introduced? To to. And that's of the, the PDS as well. We believe that we owed it as a responsibility to also protect the public purse. Once we believe that there was something unclear about some paperwork, some transactional arrangement, it was important that the government also protected the purse of our nation. I may not be happy, you may not be happy, someone may not be happy, or someone will be happy, but decisions of government are not taken because someone will be happy or someone will not be happy. It's taken in the supreme interest of our nation. Now, back to the power outages. I think that um, the new Minister for Energy um, has also spoken about the fact that um, everything on the table is being looked at, and as much as possible, Governments will make sure that we keep our lights on. Nobody wants to sleep in the dark. But we spoke but to Gridco, some, and yes. Gridco says, Gridco outlined the, the challenges, mm. financial, technical, what have you, yes. and they said that it's going to last from now till, till July. Mm. But they've for the not next been, two months. Yes, they've not two, been months. able to give a timetable yeah. for what is happening across and the nation. And I am, I am, let them bring the timetable. Let's have a discussion on why we still believe that these outages are happening. And if it, if, if it has something to do with financial, you can't sign too many power badges. When you're unable to pay, they will definitely have to take, off, take you off their grid. And so the energy minister has been mandated to also have a second look at the various agreements that were signed in the past, some being take or pay uh, agreement, uh, and for that matter, how inimical it has been to the interest of our nation in terms of our power generation, our power distribution, and the financing of our power. Mm -hmm. And so once that engagement and one, once these issues are also resolved, I am confident that it may not even get to July. This government, as I keep saying, a bold government elected to tackle challenges, and we've never departed from, 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 from these areas. And we won't shake responsibility the reaction in ensuring that to taxes. We, keep, we keep the lights on. Uh, there, there's, there's been a negative reaction feedback. Nobody feedback wants to pay taxes. To taxes. But Francesca never uh, want to pay taxes. Nobody I wants to pay, pay taxes, tax. yes, but yes. it's also about the timing of the taxes. Mm. Um, last year, COVID came to Ghana. People lost their jobs. The financial sector cleanup that yeah. happened financial sector levy 5%, new taxes uh, affecting fuel prices, road tolls. Is it fair to say that Ghanaians feel burdened and that can impact on your agenda? I think um, it's about how we couch the narrative and how we explain to the Ghanaian people. And um, that government has been doing very well. It's also up to the party to also cushion it and give government that needed backing and support. Um, in explaining these issues confidently and respectfully in all humility to the people. First of all, last year was a very tough year. It was a tough year. 2020 was a tough year yes. for businesses, for families, and for the ordinary Ghanaian. However, we are coming out of COVID. In the past, you could quickly go to other countries to borrow. Now, these same countries are also thinking about themselves and practicing more of uh, protectionism. Because the little I have, I cannot lend Francisca because I don't know tomorrow how this COVID is still going to wreck havoc or how far it's going to go. We need to dig deep. I know that it's going to be... Look, government is at great pains to even increase anything by a cent. But the time comes when sacrifices must be borne in the supreme interest of our country once again. And that's why government, even in trying to do that, is still finding ways and means to still get some external support to cushion the Ghanaian people. I know. And some you people, will agree, some, you will some agree with critics me that, of the government will say that that's always the lazy and easy approach to tax whenever we need money. When, whenever we need to show up our revenues, we go and tax. Government itself is taking some prudent decisions. First of all, um, in even ensuring that we even cut down on public expenditure. We've reduced the size of government. That can also save us some money, right? So in doing that, government is also not sitting aloof and completely detached from its people, that you keep paying taxes. I'm not going to take any extra steps to also ensure that I also um, spend within my budget. But the honest conversation we need to have is how do we get our country out of post-COVID? 
We need to support businesses. We gave some support to small and medium enterprises during the COVID period. How do we also ensure that you don't know how far this COVID is going to go? Look, I, for about a month, for last month, I thought the UK, they were coming out of, you know, their crisis. But Francisca, recent news publications from the UK will tell you that they are tightening it again yeah. to now go into another phase of their lockdown. So nobody is too sure of how far this COVID is going to take this world. And that is why, as much as possible, governments all over the world must begin to rethink on how they can internally also generate funds so that the tomorrow question that can never be answered and the uncertainty that faces the world, we can also have a situation where in times of difficulty, we can fall on some reserves and some support within us to help. Look, Ghana now to appeal to uh, uh, big companies to even go into the production of sanitizers last mm -hmm. year. These are companies that were not doing that. But, for instance, I'll mention an alcoholic beverage firm had to now use the ethanol and the alcohol they had procured to, to produce their drinks. Now they had to subsidize it, use it to produce sanitizers. And so almost each and every one was trying to help to make sure we come out of it. But there is this fear of the unknown. Today you hear of a new variant. Just some few days ago, I heard of the Tanzanian variant. Nobody is too sure where we are heading towards. So government also thought that, look, last year what was there, we spent it. We are not sure how far this thing is going to go. If we can keep some reserves, and it's still for the Ghanaian people. If it gets to a point where families uh, are losing their livelihoods, uh, people are losing their jobs. We still back to the situation of last year. Mm -hmm. It will still be this government to still dip in, uh, into our reserves and support. Okay, you've touched on the track record. Now I want yes. to I want you to touch on the internal contest. Yes, and I want to and maintaining internal discipline and cohesion. Yes, I want to bring in a bit of history. So yes. this was um, two thousand and. 2007. 2007. Um, you had what? 17. 17 aspirants. aspirants and that was heavily criticized. That, okay. for some people, uh, didn't rub off well for whoever would have emerged the winner. Um, you're looking at a Kufuado moving on yeah. for somebody else to come. Are we going to see a repeat of what, what happened in 2007? Are we going to see 17 or as many aspirants pop up? I don't think so, because we have our own internal checks now. Mm -hmm. uh, now, when we have more than five aspirants gunning to be presidential candidates, we have what we call the Sahin Dream Voting. That's how the media named it, the Sahin Dream Voting. That first layer voting is by a very small electoral college. So, just sorry, on the screen really is um, the list of um, aspirants for the MPP flag barship in 2007. I'm yeah. not sure you can see the both of oh, us. I can see. Oh, really? I think my <laughs> eyes are better. I, uh, I guess. I, but if. if, 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 if when but you I'm, were making your point. When, I, when I'm reincarnated and I'm asked um, what I want to change about myself, I'll ask God for a new pair of eyes. Oh, really? Yeah. I'd like to keep mine, good no, or bad. I, I think I want to change mine. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Sometimes but I mean, you were making the point about the internal contest so and internal discipline. Contest, internal How discipline. will 2007 but, but let me not even happen comment again? On, comment on this. Anybody who tells you that the 17 aspirant contest uh, didn't hurt the MPP in 2008, then the person is telling you a lie. And that is why, upon sober reflection, the party decided to also make some changes mm -hmm. going forward. In view of that, in 2014, when we had more than five aspirants, we, we tested for the first time the Sahindi voting. That brought the number down, because first there were seven. We brought the number down to five and presented them to National Delegate Congress. So we have moved beyond this point to ensure that we never have more than five aspirants being presented to National Delegate Congress. Okay. So that first line voting is by MPs, constituency chairmen, regional executives, national officers, a smaller electoral college to test the person's appeal, popularity, that first line of voting. And then the shortlisted five will then be presented to our National Delegate Congress for them to take a decision. So yes, the NPP wouldn't like to revisit the issues of 2007. 
was painful. Because that showed uh, disunity. Yes, that's what I'm saying. But politics is a game of ambition. And uh, sometimes you can have somebody who, who will be told by the aides, by the friends and family, look, you look very presidential. I like your tie. I like your, your shoes. I think you can make a good president. Sometimes you can also have people who are also motivated genuinely to also put themselves up for a contest. And some, some people too will come into the contest believing that, let me give it a shot. Maybe the next time it could be me. So people come into this game with various reasons. That's what I'm saying. It's a game of ambition. Look. Okay. But anybody who, I, joins I the, who joins the police service mm -hmm. as a recruit, the person aspires to be an IGP someday. And anybody who joins I'm the going to uh, so, the, so I'm going to ask then yeah. that this uh, tier structure that you tell us about, yes. will that build consensus? We had um, Paul Sabanefson talking about consensus being key. I think going around. into 2024, one of the things the MPP will strengthen will be our internal uh, reconciliation effort. Uh, and, uh, and ensuring that uh, we engage the various stakeholders. Look, you cannot force somebody not to contest. You can only dialogue with people. We'll keep so our eyes on that. But talking about uh, every policeman who recruits has, you know, yeah. some aspiration to be and IGP. Then, and, 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 and I'm every, throwing the question and, and, back and every, to you. And every military officer who so, decides to also <laughs> so uh, join, question, join the military. The military. Wants, and every Francisca so who decides to go have into, any aspirations or no, intentions no, 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 to no, become I'm, president. I think, I think, you're I think, a fine I, gentleman. No, why, why not? Uh, you didn't say maybe you like my tie or you like, <laughs> like my shoe. But, but, but the interesting conversation around it is that I, I think that um, the NPP owe it as a duty not to offend the Ghanaian people with anything that the people will find reprehensible. And that's why the president has been warning of ensuring party cohesion, party discipline. If you all go by the rules of engagement and go by the laid down procedures, I think it gets to a point where cool heads will prevail. If I know that Francesca has a better chance of becoming the leader of my party, and if I check the pecking order in the polls, I'm not doing too well, I'll have to support her. And I think with that, whilst we begin to talk, but Clearly, that conversation is way too early, and that's what we keep saying. Okay. So if we have this conversation, let's say, in 2023, it's fair enough for people to then say we are just playing for positions or not. Very well. We'll be there in 2023 you. when you have that conversation. But yeah. we wish you and your party the best of Thank luck you. in this we, agenda we 2024. That. And when you say a prayer, say one for the administration as well. Okay. When they perform, they perform for Ghana. Okay. So that's Sami Awuku, our guest today. He's the national organizer of the Governor New Patriotic Party. I'm Francisca Kakrafos, and Thank you so much for your time here on Good Afternoon Ghana.